Because it's cool, because I remember back in the day, like, kiteboarding production gear was bad. Like, if you were brand new and you're taking a lesson, you were forced to ride this, like, dangerous piece of gear that as soon as you can go up in, it's useless. That's super cool, man. And then I guess that is what made you start DC Kiteboards back in the day. Yeah. Like, how did that come about? Where do you go from, like, you know, I'm tweaking my own gear, maybe making some gear for my close friends. Where does it go from, all right, I'm just making a little one-off to, like, I'm going to start a company and actually let people know that I can be the guy to make them a good board. Good. When was that switch? Well, you know, it wasn't a... uh a particular moment where we said, I got to make a company to do that. That wasn't my goal. So when I first started kiting, I first I was in my windsurf and I used to make some of my windsurfers in Hawaii when I was competing in Hawaii. And I used to hang out with some of the local shapers in Hawaii too. And, you know, I was, when these guys were sponsoring me, I'd, I would go to watch them make my board. So I used to learn a lot from them as well. So that's what got me into the official shaping room and understanding the process. So I got to start making my own windsurfers and uh, surfboards. And then, kiteboarding came on the scene and I was on a trip back to Antigua just visiting my folks and when I saw Andre at the beach kiteboarding and I was like holy smoke this is new and being the typical windsurf I'm like ah, that's just a fad it'll never last it's not going to work yeah. you know so I was one of those um, original windsurfers that just said ah this, this, it's just a fad and then in Antigua I decided to give it a shot with the kite so I had a lesson uh, set up right there at Jabba Walk, or your, yeah. your, your backyard. You know, what year was that? Oh my gosh, you put me on the spot now. <laughs> uh, how old you? Must have been what seven or six? I don't know. What, yeah, yeah, I mean, year was that? way back. I, I don't, don't know. know. It was way back. It, it, I started in 2004. It was like three, four. Oh man, this is so in, this this is is in the 90s. Like, this is in the 90s. Yeah, mid 90s, I would say. Wow. Yeah, mid to late 90s. So um, you tried it, and then I tried. I was hooked. I mean. I didn't get up for, uh, for nothing. I mean, I, I got up and just skated across the, the, oh, the yeah. water, board perpendicular, just skipping across. Like, but pe- I loved it. People don't understand, too. Like, learning to kite back then was not Two like learning kite. to kite now. <laughs> it, was a, it was a whole different sport. Yeah. So, you know, I was skipping across the water. I got my eyeballs sunburnt. And I, 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 was, I got back to Florida now, and I was just super stoked. And, again, I'm like, you know, I'm not going to go buy a board. I, I have all the material there. I'm gonna try making uh, making the board. In fact, I still have the board in my in my shop, the original number one. Wow. You know, um, and so I, I started. Make, I made a board for me to learn on, um, and then I learned kiting and, and I progressed. I started making some more boards because coming from windsurfing and surfing, making the kite boards back then was actually easier. I can make them faster, less material. It's yep. a little cheaper. I yep. can experiment more. The sport was moving so fast that you know. Uh, you couldn't buy a board today and it couldn't six months time you have obsolete stuff you know wow. so i like the fact that i could try my own stuff so i was doing that and again back in my local scene now the boards i didn't use my friends wanted to try so they started riding it uh in you know down at delray um and they were riding it and they say hey you know they would maybe break it one day and say they wanted another one so yeah, i can't yeah. okay, make one for a couple guys and they started covering the cost I'm like this is perfect i get to experiment i get to make more stuff yeah and it doesn't cost me anything yeah. and it just got on all you know the scene came out and all of a sudden i started getting interest on the you know that's when the time the internet started coming up mm-hmm. uh, so people started seeing posts on the kite forums about my boards and then not just the local guys, people ask me, hey, can you make me a board? I'm like, sure, why not? You know, so they, it never started off being, I want to make a kite brand. Yeah. So it just started organically where I just started making boards. And if people liked it, they, they, they requested another board. Interesting, yeah. Because it's cool because I remember back in the day, like, kiteboarding production gear was bad. Like, if you were brand new and you're taking a lesson, you were forced to ride this, like, dangerous piece of gear that as soon as you can go up in, it's useless. So, like, custom boards and your boards especially for me because i was exposed to andre and all this stuff you could see like whoa that's like the board that i want to get i want to save my money up and get one of those because that's actually going to help me have better sessions and just have better gear so back in the day like custom boards were super like popular everyone had to have if you were good at kiting you had a custom custom board so there was a huge kind of demand for that stuff that's correct i think it, it spilled over because of um Windsurfing morphed into kiteboarding, so that basically uh, they were using the same windsurfing factories or windsurfing technology, windsurfing materials. So it was clunky designed. You're right. It wasn't. You know, they were trying to lead the industry because there was a production run, so there was an investment made. So they're trying to say, well, we want you to ride this board. This is what. This is going to be the next thing. And then, you know, when you got a custom board, you got exactly what you wanted, and that just took off because the sport was so new, so dynamic. Guys were riding small boards, 
long boards, yeah, narrow boards, their own whatever they wanted. Yeah. You know, so that's what custom boards really took off. And you know, so yeah, at the right time of the sport, you know, I think custom board makers all over the world were doing pretty good with kiting because initially everybody, you know, go to your local shape and and get something really awesome made. Yeah, yeah, super cool. Because that's kind of like when we first got connected, like because. You were shaping boards for Dre for quite a few years, and I saw all his boards, and I was like, damn, man, I, want, I want to get a board like that. And like, obviously, young kid, can't really afford to buy a board. And then you ended up sponsoring me a super cool, very small, like a yeah. 123 well, or something, like a one that's super right, tiny what, board. And I came and saw you ride, and I saw your dad holding on to your harness handle to keep yeah. you from flying off the ground, and you, you know, you're this high. I knew you needed a small board, and there's nobody making those boards on the market. Yeah. But I wanted to make you a board that, or like, get you get you the same result at your weight that Dre would get on his weight yeah. uh, with his board. So yeah, that's I can't remember the size of it. It was one twenty-two, maybe. It was super really tiny, small. super yeah. tiny. Nice uh, wide stance on it too. Wide, yeah, you were into the wide <laughs> stance back then. There wasn't much board beyond your toes, yeah, but it was it looked really cool. Yeah, so that's and that's when yeah. So when I saw you get involved and um, and it was taken off in Antigua, uh, they were super stoked to um, to see you getting so enthusiastic about the sport and, and yeah. taking it so I was, I was I'm so proud to be glad to be a part of that uh, that oh, part oh man game changer helped so much because I was actually on good gear and you had the whole slider base on the bottom of the That's boards because right. we were back. starting to hit we're rails and kickers and yeah, all the that stuff the guys in Florida didn't understand that what are you doing that for like yeah. don't worry the guys in Antigua got this covered yeah super <laughs> cool and then I guess that can kind of transition into the like now because now there are production gears a lot better. Like most people ride production gear, I think a way smaller percentage now ride custom. It still exists, but the general public, myself included, like the board that's that now Tono make, like I'm stoked on them. Production gears come a long way. So like, what would you say your main the main differences between like production gear now versus like custom shape stuff? Like how come production has caught on to being? so good and accessible in a sense uh, that's good the, the, the production um, or the manufacturing capabilities are different now yeah so when we started, finally evolved beyond windsurfing production factories and they started looking at the wakeboarding factories who've been waking wakeboards for a long time we started to borrow their technologies so that uh, they started to cater more to what the needs were for a wake style rider or mm -hmm. a kite board so we started to share technology to figure it out so for me as a custom board maker now the advantage i got was the consistency that comes from a production so uh, as you know when i make boards for you we'd make a prototype custom made and we'll pick the one that works best for you and we take that one and replicate it into production yeah now i can make four custom boards that i tell you is the exact same but because it's made by hand it won't ever be mm -hmm. so we pick the best one now with the production manufacturing technique that we use now we can replicate that board and we can try different techniques of, of, of fiberglass resin ratios, core materials, yeah. and really get what we want. So we take the custom board and use that as a starting point for the yeah. production board. So everything board. still starts custom, Whereas but you before, can just... before, in the old days, it was you take a production board and then see how you want to make the custom better. Mm. So it's kind of reversed now because of the technology that we're using to make these boards. And, um, and I think right now, you're right, a solid shape, the boy that comes from a good origin, the production version is probably better than the custom version. Mm. I probably still have all the custom versions of our prototypes yeah. up in the attic somewhere here. But when I ride the production version, because of quality control, I yeah. think it's a better product. The material is tougher than a custom and yeah, all that stuff. Correct. So. Cool, man. Yeah, so you got so much history with all the shape <laughs> and stuff. It's crazy. Because how long have you actually been shaping I'm boards? Making, making me feel old. Uh, I started <laughs> when I was 13 and 51 now. So I can like, who starts shaping a board at 13 years old? That, like, was that from your uncle and all that stuff? Yeah, because you know, someone he, had to like yeah. show you that that was something you could do. Like my, my, my father himself wasn't into fiberglass or boat him, but my uncle was. And he yeah. gave me the confidence to try it. Yeah, you know who gives a kid Showed 13 years old exactly yeah, yeah, yeah. just to see what can be because he used to make sailboats and stuff so I used to just be intrigued that from nothing from liquid and cloth he has this racing yeah. boat yeah, you yeah. know so I always had that vision and and just experiment and then you know the result was awesome sometimes sometimes you have failures but you yeah, know yeah. you got it to work but and you have something kind of, that like yeah. it's real and it works and yeah and it's kind of nice because you kind of see if something fails or, or succeeds, you kind of know why, because, oh, that's what I did to make it good, or that's what I did, it didn't work so well. Yeah. So all that kind of sticks in my mind and, and, and builds up over the years, over many, many years. For sure.